the UK is currently being battered by Storm Eunice and it's giving us 80 mile an hour winds which is pretty crazy and predictably because we're living in the country we've had a power cut and that's because they don't really maintain the trees around here very well there's power lines next to trees and of course trees fall over power lines go with it so we have a power cut but I'm not too worried and uh, the reason is I've got the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and this has a wonderful thing called V2L all the essential stuff in the house is currently powered by the car. So in this little zip box is the little magic V2L connector. And that's what it looks like. You've got one bit at the end here that goes into the car. And this bit is where you plug your stuff. To use the V2L, you just need to open the charging flap and then plug it in within 60 seconds. And then once it's in, you'll hear a click and you press on off, like that. And you'll, you'll see at the top, there's a green light. And once that's green, then you know you can plug stuff into it. So I'm gonna plug my extension lead into there. And this end, I'm gonna poke through the window of my house. lights here indicate what your battery state of charge is like. So as you can see, I've got ages to go until that depletes completely. And once it's plugged in, you can't take that out. You can obviously take the plug out, but you can't take that out. The only way you can do that is by turning it off. And then you'll notice it's still connected. So you have to unlock the car and then you'll hear that unlocking and then that comes out. So VTL, it um, has a limit. It doesn't want to obviously drain your battery too much so you can still actually drive it some way. You don't want to go down to 0%, do you? So you can change that if you go to EV and then you can go to this V2L button down here and it says target charge for next departure. Now, at the moment, I'm on 73% battery. If I was to set that to 70, then it just means that it would use another 3% battery, and then it would stop V2L. But I've got it set to 20. Obviously, I'm parked at home, so it's easy for me, right? So it's not going to go below 20%. Um, so that's great. Weirdly, look at that, the solar roof. The solar roof is actually generating today. <laughs> Very strange. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. V2L is actually quite simple and it's just a case of plugging the adapter into the car. So right now we have a mobile phone charging, a laptop charging, we have the modem plugged in, we have the broadband thing plugged in, we've got the fridge plugged in, the coffee machine is plugged in, although it's not actually making any coffee right now. Um, anything else? Camera battery charging. And it's currently using 100 watts of electricity. So that's not very much, is it, right? But it just shows you just how energy efficient really a lot of modern appliances are. The fridge is particularly good. V2L is 365 pounds uh, for the option. So that gets you whatever the internal stuff is that they have to do in the car. That gets you all of that and it gets you the plug that fits on the outside. You can't just buy that plug and then put it into any car. It just won't work because um, the Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6, it's got bi-directional AC so it can put the power both ways um, and it you just can't you can't use that on other cars anyway people have tried and it doesn't work it's 3.6 kilowatts is the maximum amount of power that this will do uh, that's everywhere I believe apart from America I think that's 1.9 kilowatts 
maximum. Now, if you were charged to 100%, then you can use 80% of the battery because it won't let you go below 20%. So that is, if my maths is correct, that's 58 kilowatt hours of battery you've got to use, which is an awful lot. Of, that's a lot of energy, right? You got there at your disposal. So if even if you were maxing out at 3.6 kilowatts, which is not really feasible, you're probably not going to do that all the time. If you were using that all the time, then that's 16 hours um, of energy use until you until it just stops until it stops at 20 percent. So that's um, I think that's pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, if we've just got the fridge plugged in, and if that's just drawing 100 watts most of the time, um, if we plugged the freezer in, the freezer isn't actually plugged in at the moment. If we plug that in. It just doesn't use it doesn't use very much. We could probably go for a good couple of days, I imagine, uh, easily, probably more. So V2L is just for powering your devices and plugging stuff in, which is great. But what you'd really want is vehicle to home, wouldn't you? Right. So you can actually plug the whole house into the car, or even vehicle to grid, where energy comes from your car um, back to the grid, and then you get paid money for the energy that's in your battery. And that's coming. Apparently, it's coming to the Ionic Five and. Kia EV6. They're already doing tests in the Netherlands, at least with the Ionic 5, and um, so I think that'll probably come in the near future. Whether it'll be enabled with like a, just a software update or something, I don't know, but in theory there's no difference really to powering the home and powering devices, right? It's still sending energy back the other way. What you would need is a wall box that um, enables that kind of bi-directional charging. And there is a company called Wallbox, funny enough, and they make something called the Quasar, and the Quasar 2 is just getting released soon. And up until now, you've only been able to use that with the Nissan Leaf. And with the Nissan Leaf, I think it's always been able to, uh, to uh, vehicle to home and vehicle to grid, which is an amazing thing. That's something that the Chadamo connector has enabled since day one, I believe. Um, so CCS cars will be able to do that. And as I say, this it's just something that's it's coming and um, that will be pretty amazing, I think, when that happens. And um, even Volkswagen, in fact, Volkswagen have announced that the ID3 and ID4, um, the top end battery versions of those, they will also have this capability soon and they're gonna sell the wall box as well that um, will enable it. So it's a very exciting time. And I do think that that's like one of the, it's probably gonna be the game changer for EVs. I would say. I mean, of course, they're if you're charging at home, they're cheaper to run anyway, and you know they're quiet, smooth. They don't produce any emissions, and uh, all these other things that we all kind of take for granted now if we have an EV. But this is like a proper. This could be a proper game changer. I think you know the idea of just using the energy that you have in your battery and selling it back to the grid. So I've made use of V2L before. Um, we've had two power cuts now, and also an electrician came, and um, we lost the electrics for a while um, so I've, I've used this quite a lot already it's kind of it's been really useful and we were living in the caravan for a while when we had housework done so I was also plugging the caravan into the car when we had no electrics for a while so it's amazing I know a lot of people kind of consider it a bit of a gimmick and in a lot of the reviews you'll see people kind of you know doing stuff like microwaving um, for heaters or whatever it is but actually this is like the really important stuff when you actually do have a power cut and it does actually save the contents of your fridge nice cool eh? yes yeah some people have said why don't you get home battery instead they're really expensive that's why something like i don't know be like ten thousand up to twenty thousand pounds for the battery batteries in fact and installation We've got quite, I mean, we don't have any gas now. Everything at home is electric. If we were gonna have a battery, we'd probably want one big enough to keep the heating going and um, the, the solar thermal and all this sort of stuff. So we would need quite a big one. I mean, obviously that's the thing, you know, of course, plugging into the car, we can keep some appliances going, but we still didn't have any lights and, you know, didn't have any heating and things like that. So a battery would be great, but very expensive. So this is a really good emergency option. Um, so yeah, bear in mind, Bear in mind just what this car can do. I know it's an expensive car, but when you consider how this might save you in situations like this, um, if you get a lot of power cuts like we do, then actually it's pretty good value, isn't it? We have Flaviana's sister and her boyfriend here at the moment, and it's been really useful because um, they've got jobs where they're on Teams or Zoom calls or whatever all day. So being able to still use the internet has been fantastic, really. 
for them. In fact, that was more of a priority than plugging in the fridge. So, uh, so it's been it's been great. I mean, what an amazing thing, an amazing thing this car has. But it does mean if you do get an Ionic Five or an EV6, do make sure you option it for the V2L because even if you don't think you're going to need it, it I, I think it's so useful to have it, really. So our power cut lasted 11 hours in the end, and the car was quite happy powering everything all that time. Looking at the car, what have we got? We've got 63% battery left. So um, I don't actually remember, now. I'll flash it up on screen, I don't remember what we started with. Um, that's powering the fridge, loads of devices, a light we plugged in last night. Actually the ambience was quite nice last night, lots of mood lighting and candles and things. Uh, it was quite fun. Um, we just need to get a portable induction stove and annoyingly we don't have one, which is a bit of a shame, but obviously we can use, still use the microwave, so that's good. Um, but yeah, our, our induction hob is kind of hardwired into a spur, so anyway, we couldn't use that. Um, we didn't plug in the freezer, but a freezer is good for tw 24 hours. A small freezer like ours is good for 24 hours, 48 hours for a big freezer. That'll keep your food okay. Um, a fridge is more important to get that uh, plugged in because your food will only stay fresh for about five hours. I believe in a fridge. Um, so uh, yeah, so the car did really well and um, we didn't have any problems. Um, if you overload it then the V2L will just stop and then you have to restart it again. That didn't happen but um, we didn't use the kettle, the kettle and all the other devices that would have probably stopped it. Um, so we didn't do that. You, it's quite good to be aware of how much your devices use um, once you once you know that, then you know how many things you can plug in to avoid any problems. Although, just be aware, we had two extension leads plugged in in the end, and um, probably three actually in the end. So you don't want to overload that anyway. You, it's not good. It's a bit of a fire risk. So the load was quite low really most of the time. So after all this, I would say that V2L is amazing. It's a game changer. Um, other cars that have it then, Kia EV6 has it and Hyundai Ionic 5, they're the only two I know that have it externally, that you can plug in externally, but I'm not definite. So MG ZS Long Range, the new one, that has V2L, but I don't know if that's external, it might be, uh, let me know. Um, uh, but it's certainly um, internal plugs, things like the Honda E has an internal plug. The Mazda MX-30, I think the top range does, but it's nowhere near as much as 3.6 kilowatts. There we go, that's all there is to say, I think. If you, have any, if you have any questions, then do let me know in the comments, and I hope you're safe if the storm affected you, and I think we're gonna get hit with more um, wind in a minute, so I'm actually just gonna plug in the car and charge it up a little bit, just in case we need it. Even though, you see, it didn't use much, did it? So. All right, thanks very much for watching and I'll be back very soon. Please subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified of other videos. Bye for now.